check. Hey, testing one, two. You've got a tune to the afternoon show. It is listener powered KEXP 90.3 FM in Seattle, heard all over the world online at KEXP.org. I'm Kevin Cole, starting off the show today down in the performance space. Just thrilled to have Johan Johansson and the American Contemporary Music Ensemble live on the show. Johan, welcome back to KEXP. Thank you. It's nice to be back. Yeah, it is great having you here. Appreciate uh, all the performances that you've done for us in the past. And uh, you've been really busy lately. We'll talk about everything that's been going on uh, with you and a few. But uh, do you want to start with some music? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to play um, a few pieces from um, um, uh, my new album, um, uh, Orfe, which uh, uh, came out a few months ago. And uh, so we start, start with a piece called uh, Song for Europa. Thank you. 
Johan Johansson in the American Contemporary Music Ensemble live on KEXP. That was absolutely beautiful, breathtaking. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Playing Ben Arroyo Hall. I just have to say, I just feel so fortunate and lucky to be able to sit here and listen and watch this happen. So tonight at Ben Arroyo, and uh, as I mentioned, you've been really busy the last uh, three years, nominated for three Golden Globe Awards with one win, uh, two Academy Awards, three BAFTAs, and uh, three Critics' Choice Awards. And uh, about a year ago, or at the end of 2015, you signed a Deutsche Grammophon uh, record label and uh, put out two records in the last year. We just heard three songs from one of those albums, I guess your solo album, Orfe. You also uh, released the score for Arrival and wanted to talk about both of those albums because I think they're both really distinctly different and sort of reflect two different paths uh, to your music. So first with Orfe, uh, can, you started writing that back in 2009. Can you tell me about the, the process and kind of the length of time it took? Yeah, it, it was... Um it was a, uh, an album I, um, or, or kind of like um, um, a set of ideas, um, you know, melodic and harmonic ideas that I was playing around with and um, um, didn't really have, um, and I, I had sort of a vague idea of, 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 uh, of it becoming the basis of, of something, you know, probably like a, a solo album, you know, and... and so kind of like sketches, you ske just kept yeah. making... Exactly, and, and and it was mainly like one particular kind of harmonic progression, which was like the one uh, best kind of exemplified by the first track we we heard. You know, it's, it's just this sort of ascending ascending sort of uh, um, uh, harmonic motif. You know, and and um, um, so so it had, a lot of the pieces have this sort of sense of you know kind of this sort of uh, upward uh, for, uh, motion, you know, ascending thrust somehow. And, uh, ascending from the underworld. In some way, yeah, <laughs> I guess. And, uh, and it, it just, um, I, I came um, back to these ideas like, you know, every few months and, and I, I could never kind of uh, find um, a, a, a frame around it. You know, it took me a while to find, find the, the kind of... Uh, the, the the narrative or or kind of conceptual frame around it, which which I I find always very useful for me to to kind of um, get get a grasp of 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 what an album is about, you know. And um, at, at what point did the Orpheus myth emerge? Well, that that was when I, when uh, one of the pieces uh, was uh, uh, seemed to kind of ask for for a vocal approach. So so I wanted to write write a, a piece for a choir. So. I was looking for a text, and I tend to i don't I don't write texts myself. I tend to I tend to go for for either like uh, you know uh, poetry, usually like um, e either a, uh, like classical poetry uh, in Latin or or Greek or or um, or like nineteenth century you know poets and uh, uh, romantic poets or 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 um, um, and um, and in, in this case, I I, I looked uh, into Ovid's uh, metamorphoses and mm -hmm. and his retelling of the Orpheus myth and uh, and uh, and there was just a set of kind of you know it it seemed to to uh, fit in with uh, with a lot of lot of uh, uh, things I was I was uh, you know um, a lot of a lot of my kind of interests and and. And circumstances at the time, you know, and 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 this idea of of transformation. I mean, it's a very dense myth and has a very, you know, yeah. <laughs> a lot of ref a lot of resonances everywhere. And and it's hence it's it's you could it's go a lot used, of ways with it. Hence it's it's used in a lot of a lot of different contexts by a lot of composers, a lot of filmmakers, and, and a lot of a lot of different artists. And so it, there's a lot there's a lot there. And and but but these sort of ideas of 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 you know crossing a threshold of 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 of, of uh, you know transformation of of uh, um, you know uh, going from one state to another you know and uh, and change you know it's it's a really emotionally powerful record and do you feel that uh, because you were resonating with that theme that infused it with more emotional quality I think so it's it's a very personal personal record and uh, and it yeah it, it has it has a lot you know I, I, I it was um, 
and th that was maybe why it took took a, a long time to 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 kind of uh, to 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 finish or to 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 I, w I don't like to use the word perfect, yeah. <laughs> but 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 to to get it into a shape that that I felt was was right, you know. But you could let it go. I'm sure as an yeah. artist, it must be hard to get to that point, and maybe you never feel like something is actually finished. No, no, it, it's it's just finished when it needs to be finished. You yeah. know? <laughs> um, so this is maybe projecting a bit, but uh, you know, I know you've been really really busy, and you, you do a lot of collaborations, so you probably work under a lot of deadlines. Um, was it kind of a luxury to to be able to let this music emerge over time? It it was, yeah, and I'm really glad it did. I'm really glad I took this time to 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 let it, you know, kind of develop. And because a lot of a lot of the best ideas on on the album just emerged in the last two months of of that process, really. And, in in that process, uh, do some of the original ideas or inspirations get get lost? I think so, yeah. I th I, and, and it was a very deliberate kind of uh, way of, you know, uh, letting letting these ideas, um, you know, transform and 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 letting them, um, you know, go through a process of deconstruction and and um, and and yeah. And, and there are there are versions. There are many many versions of all these pieces, you know, scattered throughout, you know, my various hard disks, <laughs> and, and and some some of them are. Are you know on 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 hard disks that are not you know accessible anymore yeah. <laughs> and lost and lost and lost in the, you know to uh, in some dark dark uh, digital corners you know so <clears throat> so that is Orfe a, a solo release that came out last year now you uh, your score to Arrival was amazing thank you and um, what was the process like for for writing the music for that film and is that similar to how you kind of work with all the films uh, you've been working on, and uh, there's a lot that you've been uh, doing recently. Um, well, I, I try to, in many ways, um, I, I, I try to, you know, use the, these film score uh, projects as um, uh, almost as ways to to experiment and to try things that I haven't tried before. You know, they're they're almost like. You know, research, research and development. You know, and uh, and I, I try to set myself challenges uh, with each one, and 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 you know, try try to do something something new. Try to try to work with people I haven't worked with pe before. Uh, attempt kind of new ways of uh, yeah. It's it's about setting setting oneself obstructions in a yeah. way, and 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 uh, and I have been lucky enough to work with directors who allow me. Uh, the time, give me the time and resources to to work like this because you need a you you can't on a, on a normal kind of film score schedule you have maybe you know two or three months and and f but for for something like like Arrival I was working on it for close to a year. So you have the time, but you also are given that creative freedom, which has got to yeah. be interesting. And I, I would guess that maybe for some composers, the more they have success, the more people go to them for that kind of sound or style that they have, which might mean less uh, sort of uh, opportunities to experiment well, and I, recreate I, yourself. I've, 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 I've been sort of trying trying not to paint myself in a stylistic corner, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, and you haven't, and, uh, you, you've had a, you've worked with director uh, uh, Denny Villeneuve for three films, um, so that must be a remarkable relationship and a lot of trust there. It is. It is, and I'm I'm really very very fortunate to to have been uh, you know to to have met uh, uh, Denny and 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 for him to take me on this sort of adventure that that he is on uh, as as a filmmaker and 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 he has a very very good sense for um, uh, for how to use music and 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 the importance of, of music in, in in his in in in, uh, in cinema and music on and sound. Not, not least, you yeah. know, and and how music and sound design coexist and 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 can be a very powerful uh, narrative and cinematic tool, and uh, and uh, the same can be said about uh, my 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 current film project, which is with um, um, Darren Aronofsky and on his new uh, film Mother, um, and and they're, they're, they they share this really yeah. amazing sense for. For for how how to use sound and music. Now, Arrival is a science fiction film. Um, did that give you certain liberties? And uh, my f understanding is Mother's more of a horror film. So, well, 
yeah, it's 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 a it's, it's a it's a film that's hard to describe, but 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 and I can't really say too much. Yeah, yeah, or, at this or point, I, yeah. I, can't, I can't really say anything. Uh, actually, but but it is it is it is um, um, uh, it, it's a very um, yeah it 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 has elements of horror, elements of of, of a thriller, you know, and and uh, but but it's um, uh, it's 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 a film that's very unique and uh, and and very. Uh, uh, hard to 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 uh, kind of compare to anything else. Really. So when you create the music, do you get a copy of the script in advance, and do you write uh, based on the script and uh, you know conversations with the director? Yeah, very much. Um, in the case of Arrival, it, w- it was very much um, um, uh, because the story is so rich in ideas and yeah. rich in um, you know uh, concepts and. Uh, and um, um, th- there's so much to work with, you know. And uh, so, so reading the short story that the book was 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 based on, and that that, that the that the film the film script was based on, and 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 the script itself, and um, and seeing uh, the concept art that um, uh, pa- Patrice Vermette, who who is who's the the set designer, w- worked with, you know, seeing those. Um, uh, um, uh, the, the 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 for the form of writing that the aliens aliens use this yeah. this uh, this um, this amazing calligraphic kind of circular um, incredibly beautiful incred- incredibly uh, strong uh, um, um, work and and so so that was immediately uh, uh, a big source of inspiration for for you know how I, how I I wanted to approach the the but also the 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 linguistic aspect of the story and 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 uh, this idea of, of 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 language and communication and and um and how to how to approach you know a, a, a completely alien species, species you know and uh and how to communicate with 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 uh, um you know someone you you who with whom you share not no no you know common points of reference so, so that 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 all of that was was a very uh, big uh, source of inspiration. Yeah, and um, when uh, you work with Denis, do you have the opportunity then to see the proofs or see the the uh, the f- parts of the film and adjust your music accordingly? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's it's um, with, with Arrival. Um, uh, I, I started working on the music uh, almost as soon as I got the script, and and I did a few. Uh, Initial uh, sessions, the very first week of during the very first week of filming, and I I sent Denny uh, some just some um, um, uh, iPhone recordings of those sessions, and and I was working with with tape loops, mm-hmm. these sort of an- analog sixteen track tape loops, and uh, and uh, creating these these sort of very dense drones uh, based on on piano. Uh, Basically, sort of attackless piano uh, uh, tones that we sort of layered uh, endlessly, and then I worked with a singer, uh, Robert Icke, Aubrey Lowe, who, who creates creates these amazing textures with this with his voice, and um, and um, we uh, I sent him like a little snippet of that initial session, and and that was you know like I said in the second week of week of filming, and he, he reacted very strongly to especially one one. Uh, Part of it, and and uh, and uh, asked me to send him a five-minute version of that, and, and that became one of the main, you know, uh, main themes in the in the film. And but then then after after that sort of initial kind of research and period, you know, where, when I'm just um, gathering a lot of sounds, gathering a lot of ideas, then when 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 they go into editing and, and post-production, there's a lot of back and forth yeah. between me. Uh, Denny and and Joe Walker, the editor. Uh, Does this all happen now, long distance? Yeah, yeah. We yeah. were we were uh, almost never in the same room. Yeah. No, just was, was, sharing ideas online and yeah, 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 and through Skype and uh, all that. G- given the nature of the script for uh, Arrival, um, do you go off on your own and then uh, really look into and study things like, uh, in this case, linguistics and uh, and you know, communication issues and think about that in terms of how it might relate to new species or, you know, extraterrestrial. Yeah, uh, Zeno, Zeno, Zeno lingui- linguistics, yes. as I think it's called. Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's fascinating and it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, 
uh, it just opened up a lot of. Uh, it, it was uh, immediately clear that you know the the human voice would be you know a, a big part of that of, of the score, and I, I wanted to work with 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 vocals, but I but I also wanted to work with kind of vocals in a way that you hadn't really heard in in uh, you know in a science fiction film before or in or in the cinema per se, you know. So so uh, and. Uh, and 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 uh, so I, I I turned to you know pe listening to 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 things like um, you know Stockhausen's The Monk for example, and um, um, uh, and and uh, various kind of vocal extended uh, extended vocal techniques like like formant singing mm -hmm. um, you know overtone singing and 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 things like that. And I was lucky enough to work with a, a vocal group, a Theater of Voices, who are based in, in Copenhagen. Uh, Is that Paul, Paul Hillier? Paul Hillier, yeah. exactly. And who, who, uh, who, who do these, uh, who, are, who are really masters of these, these techniques. And it was, it was really um, amazing to, to just spend time with them, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, experimenting and, and, and trying out ideas. Yeah, getting the emotional quality you're looking for. Yeah, absolutely. Um, sort of one last question about both albums, Orfe and Arrival. Uh, you mentioned um, when you that you like to look back uh, or use, uh, you know, some classical poetry as inspiration on on Orfe and on the solo record, um, and that you don't write words yourself. Uh, and then when you work on Arrival or a, a, a movie, you know. It tends to have a, well. It has a script and a narrative, right? How do those two things differ? Well, I, I think I'm drawn to you know kind of narrative, and and I'm, I'm drawn to kind of a you know. Um, I very rarely write pure kind of absolute abstract music. You know, mm -hmm. it, it it it's always, and I guess it's because you know I'm I'm my my background is in is in. Um, is in uh, my academic background is in literature is it's in, in in literary theory and 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 I'm 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 very drawn to 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 this kind of um, um, yeah uh, having having some kind of narrative thread you know that 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 sort of um, kind of uh, leads you through 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 a piece or, or through an album, you know, and, and of course, that, that, and I guess that's what makes my music, you know, work very well in f for, uh, with, with films, you yeah. know, and as, 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 as film score. You can interpret and translate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Johan Johansson live on KEXP playing Benaroy Hall tonight with the American Contemporary Music Ensemble. Um, do you want to play another song? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we'd love to. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you.
I'm drowning in feelings right now. That is the drowned world. Johan Johansson and the American Contemporary Music Ensemble live on the afternoon show here at KEXP playing at Benaroya Hall tonight. And that is from the uh, solo album that came out this year, Orfe, one of two albums, Arrival, the, uh, the score for that film also this past year. I know you're working on a lot of other things, most of which you can't talk about. He's not talking. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, exciting uh, projects ahead. Uh, you do, though, have your... Uh, you're, you're composing uh, the score for a film that you're directing, Last and First Men. And is this a, a first-time experience for you? Uh, well, I've, I've, I've been uh, sort of um, um, kind of working with um, um, a film like, like Super 8 and, and 16 millimeter for, for several years yeah. and mostly to use as like backdrops for, um, for, um, for live concerts and things like that. But um, um, and uh, in a way, going back to what we were talking about, this sort of, uh, you know, obsession with kind of having a narrative kind of thread mm -hmm. through, through my, my pieces, it, 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 it's sort of, this is kind of almost like just like a logical next step in a way to, 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 um, um, to put, uh, like moving pictures to it, uh, sort of that I've, that I'm of my of my own design and uh, and, and, a, and a script that you wrote. Yeah, it's oh. it's it's a it's based on a book um, uh, I, again a science fiction book uh, from the 1930s, a uh, science fiction novel uh, by Olaf Stapleton. Very um, very in interesting, uh, complex and monumental <laughs> uh, um, uh, book, um, kind of like a future history of of, of uh, mankind and the and the uh, solar system, and um, and we uh, we filmed uh, these uh, uh, in in beautiful uh, sixteen millimeter uh, black and black and white. Uh, we filmed these um, abandoned um, Tito era monuments in the um, uh, Balkan, um, um, the old uh, Yugoslav uh, mm -hmm. re republics. Uh, Serbia, Croatia, and uh, um, uh, Kosovo, um, Bosnia. Uh, 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 so we traveled through that region for a, for a month, uh, filming, um, uh, and um, and I I was lucky lucky enough to get uh, Tilda Swinton to to narrate uh, the the story, and um, so it's like a combination of 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 this this. Um, Sto kind of like uh, almost like like a uh, anthropological um, uh, but also quite lyrical description of uh, the end of our solar system and uh, uh, accompanied by these visuals of these these this sort of uh, ut utopian monuments uh, from the yeah. from the Tito era and uh, and uh, and a live a live music uh, uh, with uh, the BBC Philharmonic and uh, this will this will premiere um, at, in uh, at the Manchester Festival in um, in July. Oh, that's coming up. That's your next date. In, yep. uh Well, I have a date of June 29th ish. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a uh, it's early July, I believe. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and uh, the film's coming out around then as well. Uh, this is yeah, this is all like a, a, a multimedia performance, oh, cool. basically. Something you'll tour. With? Yes, definitely. Three. Definitely. Uh, again, playing Ben Arroyo Hall tonight. One last question: Deutsche, Deutsche Grammophone is going to re-release your first album this September, and there's going to be a remix record uh, associated with that. Um, who, who's all involved? Who's doing the remixes? Uh, well, we're sort of still in the process of, of talking to to, uh, to various people about about that. So so that's so it's. But it's it's going to be you know both people people that I've worked worked with kind of you know almost like friends and family you know mm -hmm. and um, and also um, you know younger um, uh, artists that I that I admire that are doing interesting things you know and um, and um, and then maybe uh, also a group of people that that I, I see kind of as as role models in some way and that I've I've approached and. Uh, and uh, so it's going to be an interesting group of people. Wow. Well, can't wait. Um, again, thank you so much for, uh, for taking the time out and playing this afternoon. Really appreciate it. It's Johan Johansson live on KEXP. And uh, again, Ben Royal Hall tonight. Huge thanks to Alia, Jim, and Justin on video. Uh, photo documentation uh, by Karina, Kevin on uh, 
sound, Matt O running the board, and uh, Nancy and Jennifer uh, helping out on hospitality. And huge thanks to all of the KEXP donors that make in-studio performances like this possible. Thank you again. Thank you so much. It's a ple pleasure and privilege. It's here. great having you here. Thank you. Uh, Johan Johansson, live on KEXP. This is KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at kexp.org.